Are you searching for answers? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World. brothers and sisters out there who are thinking about a call to the religious life, the priesthood, I encourage you to keep listening to our blessed Lord and keep cultivating that spirit of adventure. Lord, where are you guiding me? Lord, what is that path that you've already laid out? Okay, Lord, let me walk with you. Let me take even those first couple steps on that vocational journey. Mother Mary, help me say yes. Hello, my name is Ethelyn David, and today I'm here with Father Mark McGuckin. Hello, Father Mark. Hi, Ethelyn, good to see you. Good to see you again. And Father Mark belongs to St. Mary's Chilliwack, Chilliwack, BC. You're always so happy and, and very calm and uh, it's just a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming all the way out to Chilliwack. Yeah. I invite people up to Chilliwack, mm -hmm. but um, many people think it's like on the edge of the earth yes. because it's so far out there. You need you a know? passport. You need a passport. You think <laughs> you drive all the way out to Chilliwack, you might fall off the edge. Right. But it's not true. I invite people out, but uh, it's good. Yeah, it's on the edge of our archdiocese mm -hmm. or near the edge. And so it's about an hour and a half drive from Vancouver, but um, yes. yeah, I love it here. So Father, please share with us your childhood, your family life back then. Are you local? Yeah, yeah, I grew up in Maple Ridge, okay. BC. So uh, Maple Ridge is in the Archdiocese of Vancouver, mm -hmm. kind of a suburb, bedroom community to mm -hmm. Vancouver, 45 minute drive from downtown. And yeah, I was kind of living the suburban life, childhood. I, um, St. Patrick's in Maple Ridge is my home parish, okay. but I went through public school Okay. Uh, elementary school and high school in Maple Ridge, and then uh, UBC after after graduating. So uh, yeah, it was a yeah good childhood, lots of sports and hanging out with friends. It was a good um, growing up in Maple Ridge. Mm -hmm. um, my dad is kind of the Catholic rock of my family, mm -hmm. and uh, my mom is not religious, and so uh, but respected my dad for raising myself, and my sister in the faith. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that would be, you know, going to mass on Sunday, saying prayers, and going to, you know, public school during the week. We would have catechism Tuesday mm -hmm. nights, and um, yeah, it was a, a good time growing up, and um, and uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of fond memories. Yes. Um, what did you take at UBC, your alma mater? Well, yeah, I had a, a bachelor of, of arts, um, uh -huh. majoring in film production. Okay. And so I got in, when I started UBC, um, I went in with my background in theater and creative writing. Mm -hmm. And then I, I became close friends with uh, folks on campus who were really into film production. Mm -hmm. And I had, before going to UBC, I had no clue that they had a film program, but was kind of funneled into that kind of route. And I thought, wow, this would be great. I didn't do any film stuff in high school, but I love watching movies. I like <laughs> writing and performing. and. So it's kind of a natural fit. Uh -huh. And so I entered the film uh, production program and and that's where I, I, I started falling in love with editing and um, directing and and behind the scenes and, you know, uh, the behind the scenes work in the, in the film world. Okay. And at the same time, still doing uh, improv comedy. I was oh. part of the, uh, the Varsity Improv team uh -huh. at UBC. And so that was the, the real joy on campus. So Father, uh, how did your friends and family react to this? Did you, and did you go through a vaca uh, vocation weekend to discern this is what you wanted? And how did you feel this calling? How did it touch your heart? Yeah, well, after the kind of dust was settling, after we finished all our contractual obligations on our big production that we were working on, mm -hmm. Um, that's when kind of those haunting questions started to stir in my mind and my heart mm -hmm. of, you know, 
what is life all about? What am I doing with my life? Mm -hmm. Does God really exist? And if He does, and if He's the God who has revealed Himself in sacred scripture, what does that really mean in my journey? And so that began that kind of earnest investigation to these kind of big questions, uh -huh. you know. And so during this time, it was the summer of uh, uh, 2009, I started really digging in to sacred scripture again and the catechism, looking at things online and so many elements, like a big one was the image of Our Lady of Guadalupe mm -hmm. and the confounding science uh, about the image and all this investigation, that and the Shroud of Turin. And I, I thought it, I found it very mentally stimulating mm -hmm. and, and drawing me deeper into this, these mysteries. And during the summer of 2009, yeah, I experienced this just a real reawakening to the faith. Yeah, so at this time, I had to start speaking with people mm -hmm. about what I had been experiencing. Right. So at first it was my parish priest. Who was uh, your parish priest at uh, Father time? Vincent Hawkswell at oh, St. Really? Patrick's. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, a few years before he retired. retired yes. So I would go to Mass on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would be, I, I loved listening to Father Vince. Yes. And during his homilies and during Mass there. And I felt, you know, I got to share what I just, I, I, what I've been going through mm -hmm. with the priest. And this was my first conversation with a priest outside of confession, one-on-one -on -one okay. for, yeah, forever. Uh -huh. And I was 28 years old at the time. And I went into Father Vincent's office. At the end of the conversation, he said, well, Mark, this is great, I'm glad you're here. And, and I think even in that, in that meeting, I mentioned possibly a calling to the priesthood. I didn't know for sure. Uh -huh. I felt the inkling. And he heard that and he said, well, this is great. Thank you for coming in, but you know, why are you coming in to talk to me and not the vocations director for our archdiocese? Mm -hmm. And I said to him, Father, I don't know what that word means. Uh -huh. I'm sure I had heard it before, uh -huh. but vocation, it was just a new term, a fresh term. <laughs> and he, I'm 28, he's describing you know, what, a, what vocation means, uh -huh. calling, and how we have a priest dedicated to this. And so he directed me to Father Hien Nguyen, mm -hmm. the vocations office at the time, and that, that really got the ball rolling on that journey of discernment. Mm -hmm. So this is very different from the life you were leading and the thoughts that you were having were very different from your film producing, et cetera. And when you, once you started sharing this here with your family and friends, were they supportive? Was it a big surprise? Did they try to say, you're kind of crazy, this is just a phase you're going through? <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a big piece of all this. Yeah. Speaking with uh, friends first, uh -huh. then family. So my very closest friends in Vancouver, uh, those who I was close to, really close to, I um, invited out for a walk or coffee or like a little lunch mm -hmm. just to share with them what I was going through. And, um, and so just regarding my friends, my very close ones, my glo close friends, I knew they were just, they were gonna be my friends no matter what, mm -hmm. we were so close. Sure. And then they kind of have, you know, the, the next circle mm -hmm. level of friends. And I approached those conversations with a lot of apprehension because I thought, okay, they're my friends and colleagues in the comedy and film world. Mm -hmm. How are they gonna take this? You know, part of it was, okay, I gotta talk to these people because I have to, you know, get them to take my name off the Rolodex at least a little while, because yeah. I need a time to discern. I don't know what that's gonna look like exactly. Mm -hmm. but the other piece was like, they're my friends. I'm gonna share what I've been going through. Mm -hmm. And instead of talking about just the business or, you know, things we find funny, just to go deeper. Like, this is my life. Yeah. And so, Part of that was like, <laughs> I'm a Catholic Christian. I have been, and you, this is something you didn't know. Mm -hmm. Not just that, but this is what I've just lived through. And I, I don't expect you to understand it or believe it completely, but you're a friend of mine and I just want to share it with you. After those conversations finished mm -hmm. and we said goodbye, I felt we were closer friends at the end of the conversation oh. than we were at the beginning. Uh -huh. 
they recognized that something powerful was happening in my life. Oh. That was a big deal with my friends. And then, yeah, family. Yeah. You know, and that was, uh, yeah, quite similar, mm -hmm. but different also. I mean, with my dad, who is very much the Catholic rock of the family, you know, uh, uh, yeah, he was very much overjoyed and didn't really see this coming. Mm -hmm. But it, it was, yeah, something probably he'd been praying for all his life. Right. And times in the past, I think maybe three or four times when I was growing up, he would ask me, you know, Mark, you know, you can consider the priesthood, <laughs> you know. At those times, I thought, Dad, give me a break. <laughs> Forget about it. That would have been the last, quote unquote, occupation uh -huh. that I'd ever want to pursue in my life. What does a priest do? I didn't know, you know. I want to live my life be a, you know, a professional athlete or movie star or something. Um, but <laughs> until I was 28 years old and then talking to him, you know, just saying that this, I'm, I got to walk in this path. Mm -hmm. Didn't know it for sure, but I had to discern the path mm -hmm. to the first the seminary, then the priesthood. And other family members, different reaction. My mom not being religious, quite very challenging. So um, you discerned, you went to Madonna House for a year or two years, the one in Vancouver here or back east? Yeah, Madonna House is a, a lay Catholic apostolate. Uh -huh and they have a field house here in Vancouver. Yeah. And that's where I first met the staff members of okay. Madonna House, okay. Marilyn Murray at mm -hmm. the time, mm -hmm. wonderful woman. And she informed me about this, uh, the foundress of Madonna House, the great Catherine Doherty, mm -hmm. and how back in Cumbermere, Ontario, where the mother house is, they have a formation yes. program for men discerning the priesthood. Mm -hmm. And at the time, back in the fall of uh, 2009, I thought this was, Perfect. Mm. Uh, I, I felt even before then, I got to go in the seminary right now. Mm -hmm. It's kind of riding on a wave of euphoria, just like I'm ready. Yeah. Just I'm on fire. Mm -hmm. Let's go. And <laughs> Father Hien at the vocations office, he was so wise. Yeah. He's like, okay, let's put on the brakes. Let's we'll put on the brakes for mm -hmm. now. Not Exactly now, Mark, he said. Uh -huh. <laughs> but there's this place called Madonna House. I think it would be good, good, uh, mm -hmm. well suited for you. And during that time of Madonna House, the big piece that was revealed to me was that I'm a calculator. I like to calculate and plan for myself. Uh -huh. I'm going to weigh the pros and cons, married life, priesthood, single life. It's for me to choose. And then it was around March of 2010, I felt, and it was thanks to my spiritual director there who said something like, Mark, what if that choice is, has already been made? Uh -huh. That God has already made it. And that he, the signposts are there. And so this question, oh man, it was just like water on parched earth. Mm -hmm. And it was, yeah, what if that's already there? And so I could see kind of the signposts pointing in, in, in the direction of the seminary. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, I gotta give this a shot. Okay. I couldn't live with myself if I didn't give seminary a shot. And so getting back to Vancouver, getting all the application stuff going with Father Hien, and in September of 2010, uh -huh. entered the seminary. Okay. And, um, and so I was what, 29 at the time. Okay. And uh, what was seminary life for you? Was it? Uh, was it what you expected? Yeah, well, it, much like Madonna House, okay. the second semester that kind of those lights were going off and I felt something really special about being there at the seminary. Okay. So the first semester, kind of getting used to things, um, the Benedictine way of life that is so influential at Seminary of Christ the King, it's mm -hmm. so good, but at first it's kind of jarring, yes. you know, ora et labora, like mm -hmm. the work and the prayer. And, the, the academic life, the community life, okay. The feeling of being at home and being at peace. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that kind of snowball continued to accumulate mm -hmm. as the semesters went by.
So yeah. as a priest, how are you practicing the gospel and how are you being Christ to others? Well, <laughs> challenge every day. Uh -huh. um, the basic challenge revolves around um, not uh, pretending that I'm some sort of Messiah, mm. you know, to keep centered and grounded in Christ personally um, is an ongoing lesson, mm -hmm. a daily lesson. You know, for example, you know, a whole checklist of meetings and, or activities that a priest has. And it's tempting because you're in a position of influence mm -hmm. just to say, okay, I got the expertise. Okay, I'm, I'm going to fix people. Mm -hmm. And it's a recipe, it's a blueprint for crashing and burning <laughs> and for ultimate failure. Uh -huh. Why? Well, because our Lord is in control. It's His mission, it's His work. And so as the great, my patron saint, St. John the Baptist famously said, you know, I must decrease, the Lord must increase. Mm -hmm. And so, and it takes so much weight off the shoulders. So for instance, I love journeying with people, mm -hmm. just the walking with people, as I call it, spiritual direction, confession, um, counseling, aspects of counseling. And when I approach those situations, you know, I just, I, I try to at least, just be present, mm -hmm. listen, and trust in our Lord. That short little prayer we say in the Divine Mercy, mm -hmm. Jesus, I trust in you. What is the role of media in evangelization and how could it be used towards the good? Today's media. Excellent question. So yeah, we find ourselves here, the 21st century, and no point in human history has humankind been saturated with so much. The good news is, well, we got the good news. Mm -hmm. We got the gospel. We have the victory of Christ right. to extend. And the work of evangelization is to extend that mm -hmm. and to say, no matter what the threat is, the series of assaults that we see looming on the horizon or those we're facing today, we have that good news. Mm -hmm. To absorb it, to soak that in, that the truth that our Lord and Jesus is alive and well. With evangelization, I know you're involved in several um, organizations, groups, and I think one of your biggest loves is working with the youth, right? Yeah. Uh, you've done World Youth Days for uh, a couple, couple of them, I think? Two World Youth Two Days. Two World Youth yeah, Days. Yeah. It's Panama and, uh, did you Barcelona? Poland. Poland, yeah. okay. And uh, so tell me about um, working with the youth. How, what do you, how do you reach out to them and how do you relate to them? And yeah, yeah. yeah. I love it. I love youth ministry. Uh, a highlight of my weeks during this, the school year is on Thursdays, is my time at the high school. I'm the chaplain at our local high school, St. Mm -hmm. John Ray Buff Secondary. Mm -hmm. My highlight, my, my, the past two World Youth Days, uh, the location is part of it. It's cool to be in a different country, to see, the, the, the experience the different cultures, the families mm -hmm. there, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But to journey with this kind of troop that you're with, mm -hmm. you're real soldiers of Christ, you're on this pilgrimage. But other, other pieces, maybe someone in the group is not doing so well. They need some extra assistance. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Great. We got opportunities that we didn't expect. Mm -hmm. We could presume that they're chores, Right. Or, ah, oh, this isn't ruining my World Youth Day experience. No. It's like, this is it. Yeah, let's delve into this. Yeah, we're planning to go to point A today, but now we're going to point Z. Mm -hmm. And we didn't expect it. Exactly. And let's go. And then let's share about our experience. Mm -hmm. How is the Lord working in my life now? And then hopefully let's, let's take it back home with us. Mm -hmm. You know, how we walk as a pilgrim Christian. Mary is your mother. How has she guided you along like a Juan Diego, our Lady of Guadalupe? I love our Blessed Mother. And we're in St. Mary's Parish here. And um, she's had such a, a deep, powerful influence in my life. And I, look at, I like looking at St. Mary, our Blessed Mother, and St. Joseph as kind of, in a military sense, kind of the stealth fighters almost underneath the surface there. Mm -hmm. And they prefer to be not in the limelight. Mm -hmm. Our Lord has the light. Exactly. But man, are they effective mm -hmm. and very powerful influences. Mm -hmm. And 
to, yeah, I encourage, I try to do this myself, developing a deeper relationship with the saints, right. especially Mary and St. Joseph. Brother Mark, as we were preparing for Christmas, mm -hmm. I'd like to find out from you how Christmas differs now as a priest than before were you when you weren't a priest yet. <laughs> sure, sure. Are there big differences? Uh, yeah, I think, well, I think the biggest difference was, you know, growing up, and kids are excited about, mm -hmm. you know, Christmas, Santa Claus coming, <laughs> presents under the tree. Yes. <laughs> For me, it was, um, uh, it was, Christmas was about really me. Mm -hmm. You know, I was at the center of Christmas. Mm -hmm. My, my Christmas, my presents to un, unwrap. And, and, um, and so, yeah, our Lord was there. We'd go to Mass, of course, Christmas morning. And, but really living that me-centered life mm -hmm. that then would articula articulate itself in all sorts of ways on my journey. Right. And to, you know, as we enter the seminary and then being ordained a priest and as growing as a Christian, having that Christ-centeredness on this real joyous holiday. Mm -hmm. And He delights in us rejoicing, offering presents, receiving presents, and that sort of thing. And so with that, one can really take away from the Christmas season a sense of, oh yeah, what a wonderful way to begin the year. Our Lord coming down to us again, leading us mm -hmm. through this life, God willing to heaven, yes. you know, and anticipating that presence in our lives. But it's still about you because it's all about you and Jesus. Still, but you're sharing everybody is there. I mean, Jesus is there for everybody. But when you were saying it's all about you, me, 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 and you've got the biggest me now, the biggest gift. Well, yeah, in Christ, you know, mm -hmm. Him as our firm foundation, right. you know, relying on Him, not on our, own, on our own faculties, being too concerned about you know, um, our own gifts, our own failures, to say, okay, our Lord has me. Yes. You know, let's walk, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. That's a big, yeah, focus on Christmas there, yeah. Yes, thank you very much, Father Mark, for this interview, this conversation we've had. Yeah, thanks, And um, it was just very wonderful to learn a little bit more about you, and, and I love the way you told you shared with us your life before and how it's changed now that you when you decided to follow jesus as a priest my pleasure you're very welcome thanks again for coming all the way out here <laughs> my pleasure St. Mary's. come back again oh good good <laughs> okay. thank you very much As we approach the Christmas season here, a beautiful mystery that we're called to really reflect and savor is that of the Incarnation. And it's so good, especially in this season, to really enter into this mystery, our Lord coming down to us. Whatever state of life we, are, we have or we find ourselves in, whatever challenges we face, even on a day-to-day -day basis, to know our Lord is here coming down right into, we can say, the swamp of humanity, the swamp of our own personal turmoil, the reality of my family life, my work life, our Lord descending right down into it to breathe life there, to live in it, to guide us to Himself, to lift us upward. It's not just a it's certainly not a figment of our imaginations, and it's not just an intellectual truth to ruminate on in our minds, but a lived reality. And this is what the Christmas season, I think, offers at the core of it that keeps being refreshed year after year and propels us into the whole liturgical, the rest of the liturgical year. So I encourage all of you just to keep savoring that goodness of that incarnation, that mystery.
This is a wonderful way in which the Word of God is being brought to the people who need it most, that they might hear the truth, that they might be healed by the saving words of the gospel, and that they might be liberated and free to walk in a newness of life. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you who support Shalom Ministry, and to all those who watch, that they might be carried by the Word of God and enlightened with the light of life. May God bless you and support you in every way. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.